FireCAD is going to create a complex riser diagram for this 11-story high-rise building. The main control equipment is located on the first floor. There's a fire alarm control panel, there's a DGP containing amplifiers, There are four NAC booster panels, each providing four NAC circuits. Another group of control equipment consisting of a DGP and four additional NAC panels is on the fourth floor in the electrical closet. And Another similar group of panels is on the 8th floor. To create this riser, FireCAD provides tools to enable us to set the device elevation and columns for each device in the system. In this case, we need to plan ahead and we set up a matrix of columns and elevations. We plan to have one elevation for each floor of the building and our riser will be organized into six columns. We'll have devices, the main floor devices in a column, the south stairwell riser in a column, the north stairwell riser in a column, and also the control equipment and junction boxes in their own respective columns. This jurisdiction requires that all wiring and devices in a stairwell be two-hour protected. Therefore, the wiring and devices in the south stairwell will be one vertical riser. The main wiring riser will be installed in a stacked set of electrical closets that go from the bottom to the top of the building. This is the electrical closet riser location on floor number two. Another riser will be installed in the north stairwell. This is the north stairwell riser. The first step in making our riser is to set the elevation of all the devices. The riser panel with set device elevation command is used. Then we select all the devices on a specific level and set them to a number. The numbers are simply relative to each other. So three is higher than two, four is higher than three, and so forth. We start with a low number at the bottom of the building and work our way up with higher and higher numbers. Be certain that all devices on all levels of the building receive an elevation setting. Now let's check our planning grid to determine how to set the device columns. First, in order to set the columns, we set the column of all the devices in the entire building to the column which will have the most devices, the majority of devices that are not separated out into vertical risers. We set them for column three. Everything in the whole building is now column three. Now we select all the control equipment and set it to column one. It's easier to select all the control equipment if when you place the components on the drawing, you use a unique riser, in this case, 
we call it Control Equipment Riser, and then we can just select Similar. And then set the riser columns. As you can see, we can select the components first and then set the column. In this case, we overrode the three column setting for the control equipment and put it into a one column setting. The junction boxes in the main electrical closet riser are set to column two. We do that by selecting them first. And then again, after we do that, we use the riser set column command and set the column of the selected devices. In this case, changing the three to a two column setting for the junction boxes. Finally, we set the riser columns for the south and north stairwells in a similar manner. In the south stairwell, of course, we have monitor modules, tamper switches, flow switches, and junction boxes that all must be selected and then put into the column, which in this case, I believe is going to be column number three. No, column number four. Now the north stairwell, we're going to select all of the junction boxes there. and they get set to column number five. Now that the elevations and columns are set properly, it's time to connect our circuits. And it is important that we set columns and risers elevations before we connect circuits. In this case, we're going to connect the SLC L1. The order of connecting here is very important if we want to get our expected results. We start by connecting all the junction boxes in the electrical closets to the SLC riser. We work our way all the way up the building, one click at a time in order to get the junction boxes in the proper order on the SLC circuit. This is a very important step not to be missed. Now we can see the junction boxes in order starting at the fire alarm panel and going up the riser and placed on the SLC circuit.
Now, because we have isolator modules on each floor, we cannot use the connect command to connect our SLC devices. We must use the branch command. In this case, we branch from the terminal cabinet or junction box, which has already been connected to the SLC circuit, then to the isolator module and the three smoke detectors that are on each of these typical floors. That was the 11th floor. Now we go to the 10th floor, working our way down, again branching from the junction box, first to the isolator module, and then to the individual SLC devices that are beyond the isolator module. Although we have not completed our connections, the riser tool is a good way to check and see if we're doing things according to our plan. It never hurts to generator, generate a riser very quickly and then just check to see if we have done what we intended. And it does look like we have. Our SLC is going up through the junction boxes from the panel terminating on the junction boxes where we're connecting them to the isolator modules with a branch connection. In a like manner, we now proceed to connect the speaker circuits from the DGP on the eighth floor to the speaker circuit on the 11th floor. Again, we go right past the devices on the lower floors below the 11th and just connect the junction boxes. This then routes the riser from the source panel on the 8th floor to the devices we're going to be connecting, which are going to be speakers on the 11th floor. And now we make our way around and connect every speaker on the 11th floor to the speaker circuit number 12. Now, using the same methods, we connect the NAC circuits. In this case, starting from a NAC panel on the eighth floor, we follow the junction boxes up to the 11th floor. And because we require multiple NAC circuits on each of these floors, we're going to only connect about one-fourth 
of the NAC devices onto each of the NAC circuits. That's our first quarter, and then NAC circuit 47. We repeat the process going up through the riser. This may seem a little tedious and repetitive, but it does get a good result of a clearly defined riser that doesn't require a lot of manual editing. Now, another preliminary riser diagram to make certain that we are doing what we intend to do. And it looks like we are. Our speaker circuit on the 11th floor is completely connected. We are looking good. Let's proceed now and connect all the rest of the circuits to all the rest of the devices in this building. Now all the devices are connected, let's make our final riser. Be certain that the following options on creating the riser are properly set. You have many ways to produce a riser. We've already figured out what we want here, and so we set those options. And here's our final riser, showing all the devices on the elevations we want them on, the speaker circuits and NAC circuits connected to the speaker strobes, all separated out nicely, the riser showing the device elevations, over here the south stairwell riser with junction boxes, monitor modules, water flows, tampers, and all the control equipment and junction boxes neatly stacked up. That's the creation of the riser diagram. If you have questions, in support.cadgen.com or you can phone us at the numbers listed on our website for technical support or sales information if you're interested.